Hello guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today, my empties basket, my new empties basket is overflowing. Uh, so it's time to do an empties video. I wanted to hold off a little bit longer because I had a couple of products I was close to finishing, but like literally the basket is full and I have nowhere else to put this, and recycling goes out tomorrow night, so we should do this now. <laughs> I got a lot of stuff in here. It's a really good mixture. I think it's like less makeup, probably more body and hair care. Um, I am going to hold on to the hair care empties. I'm also going to be doing a review roundup soon uh, for my curly hair journey, though my hair isn't looking the best today, which is why I'm not filming it today. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's a good mixture. Makeup, hair care, body care. So let me go ahead and get this separated and let's jump in because like always, my empties videos tend to go long. <laughs> So let's start with body care because I think that's the biggest section of products that I have here. Recently over the last couple of weeks I've been using up a lot of the kind of like leftover or gift products that we got ever since the move. Uh, we had a lot of body care and I've gone through and used up a lot of the stuff we kind of had as backups. So we have a good amount of that here including this body butter that Alvin has had for like forever. It's from the body shop and it's the sweet lemon body butter. I wasn't a fan. It felt a little too oily on my hands and it just wasn't moisturizing enough. Like my hands would feel dry, but oily. So wasn't a fan of this, wouldn't recommend. Next, I have an empty bag of Epsom salt. This is actually the Amazon brand, the Solimo. Um, and it was just okay, honestly. The regular, um, what's it called? I'll throw a picture up, but the regular Epsom salt that you get at Target is a lot better, so yeah. Next, I have two empty uh, body creams from Bath and Body Works. This is the Aromatherapy Stress Relief, and then this is the Aromatherapy Ocean Essentials. Uh, Eucalyptus C, Eucalyptus, this, this was a new one, and I love the scent of it, so I'll definitely will be picking this one up again. And then this one, I believe, was the regular Eucalyptus Tea. Yeah, Eucalyptus Tea. One of my favorites. Honestly, I love the entire, like, aromatherapy line from Bath & Body Works. It just, they smell amazing. And the body creams are, like, perfect deep conditioning hand creams. I love using them. I have two deodorant empties. Just my, basically, these are, like, my go-to. These are just the Dove Advanced Care. This is Cool Essentials, and then this is Revive. I like the cucumber one just because I like the scent the best. Um, but basically, any deodorant from this line from Dove, I love, and I do use them. You can buy these in bulk at Costco, and I think that's the last time I got a bulk one of these at Costco not too long ago. So I do have enough deodorant to last me at least till the end of the summer. It's been disgustingly hot, so I do have to wear a lot of deodorant because I do sweat a lot. Um, so these are really good. Next, I have a body soap that was like just okay. I was actually pretty shocked. For body soap, I like to use a shower gel and I tend to use the shower gels from Bath & Body Works, but I hadn't been to a Bath & Body Works store in a while and I didn't want to place an online order just for one shower gel. Um, so I went looking at Ulta and like they really don't have a lot of shower gels and I was kind of shocked. So when I went a while ago, one of the only things available like as body soap was this from Soap & Glory and it was the Hydrating Body Wash in Clina Colada. I, it was a little too, it was like a, the white milky kind of moisturizing one. It smelled nice, but honestly, I, I just don't like moisturizing body washes. I'd rather have a, like a shower gel. Um, so while I used up the whole thing, I wouldn't be buying it again. Next, I have a uh, shaving cream that I use just for shaving my legs. This is the Pure Silk Raspberry Mist. Uh, I didn't buy this because to be quite honest, I still have backups. <laughs> Years ago, at my old job, we got, these are free samples. Um, and so I picked up enough free samples and I don't always use shaving cream because I like to get the razors that have the built-in like bars of moisture on them, right? And I just use that to shave. Uh, but every now and then, especially when it gets really, really dry or really, really hot, I like to have the extra moisture there. So I still have a few of these on backup <laughs> from my old job and it works and it smells really nice. I have been on the hunt for a good body scrub and I still have not found like a really good go-to one. So I've tried out a couple and I got two empties here. I have um, the Tree Hut Vitamin C Shea Sugar Scrub, which was just okay. Um, honestly, I got this at Target. I thought it was just okay. I got this at Target. I think it was a little overpriced for what it was. Um, it smelled good, but honestly, I don't know if I liked the price um, for the amount of product that I got. So I don't think I'll be buying this one again. One that I actually really liked, but again, I think it's just a little pricey. Uh, this is from Shea Moisture, and this is the Lavender and Wild Orchid Calming Hand and Body Scrub. I loved the scent of this so much. I thought this worked really well. I just, I feel like... I wish body, I could get a body scrub that came in a bigger container, you know, because I go through a lot of it. I like to use it on my legs in the summer, and I really like to use it on my hands after I do a manicure for myself. But 
I don't know, I got this at Walgreens. I feel like it was a little pricey, but so far this is kind of my favorite. So if you have any good body scrub recommendations, please let me know down below. Next, I have an empty from Shop Missy. This is the Jelly Jam Lip Mask, which is 100% a dupe for the Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask. Please never spend that much money on that again. Pick this up for a dollar. It is so moisturizing. I love putting it on right before bed, and I wake up and my lips are just plump and moisturized and beautiful. Please do yourself a favor pick this up. Next, I have a couple of just chapsticks. I have this Chap Et Vanilla, which is basically the, the kind that Alvin can get at the grocery store his family owns. It's free, so I tried it out. Uh, honestly, I'm not a fan. I really like the, the regular old Blistex better. The, it's a couple of bucks. I think it's worth it. They're, they, they, they have a really good scent. They're really moisturizing. They work well under makeup. They're my go-tos. So I have two empties here, and I have one I'm currently using at my work desk. And I think they come in packs of three, so probably I'll buy another one soon, because, again, it's just my, my favorite go-to. <laughs> so, this one has a story attached to it. This is an old, old YSL lip moisturizer, lip gloss kind of thing that I bought a while ago. I picked up a couple of YSL products just to try them out and I got this. Way overpriced. You never, that's why I always preach you never have to spend a lot of money to get a good like chapstick because you don't. But I picked this up and I think I used it in my almost full face of YSL from years ago. So I'll have that up in the cards. So if that's any like testament to how old this is, there you go. But I actually, I went to clean out my office because we were actually, as of, um, what, this month, July, we are officially working from home the majority of the time, if not full time. And it, it took a while for my company to come to that decision because until like before COVID, I had an assigned desk, I had my own little cubicle, I had a bunch of stuff at my office and it, I just left it all there in March of 2020. And so they made this decision, they're actually gonna clear out the office. I think they're gonna make it co-working space so no one's gonna have assigned cubicles or desks anymore. So I had to get all my shit out of the office, right? So we drove to Hoboken, we emptied out my desk and I found this in my desk. <laughs> Cause I think I spent most of my time at work and I really wanted to use this up and make it an empty. So I thought the best way to get my money's worth was to bring it to work with me so I could keep it in my desk and use it at work. Well, guess who did not bring this home in March of 2020 and it sat in my desk for a year and a half. <laughs> So yeah, so I found it when I cleaned out my desk and you're damn right I'm not using this anymore. It's old as sin. So it's an empty now. Uh, I still don't think it was worth the money and I'm just like now I'm just upset that I didn't actually get to use the whole thing because this is, this, I, I don't want to put this on my mouth. I'm sure it's gone bad, but why? I wish I had gotten my money's worth out of this. I was so stupid. Let's move into skincare next. Let's see. First, um, I have got my favorite makeup remover. This is the Bioderma Sensibo H2O. I buy this in um, packs on Amazon, though recently I found that I had, there was like a three pack that I bought a while ago that I really liked, um, but they don't have that available anymore. So I picked up just one of the regular bottles. This is the best for taking off the amount of eye makeup that I wear on, on the daily. This is amazing. So uh, I love this. I think this is the fifth bottle I've bought recently. And by recently, I mean the last few months. This does last me a good amount of time, especially because I really only use it to take off my eye makeup. I use a makeup eraser to get off um, the rest of my makeup along with either a makeup wipe, which I'm cutting my use down of, or I, have my, I actually have a new favorite uh, cleansing balm, and it's actually from Shop Miss A. I'm shocked by how much I like that cleansing balm. So what I'd like to do is go into the cleansing balm, and I use a makeup eraser to get all the makeup off with the cleansing balm. Um, so I really only use this for my eye makeup, and it just it works awesome on my eye makeup. And because of that, it stretches and it lasts a long time. So I like the price. I like how well it works. I like how accessible it is. It's one of my favorites. Next, this is one of my go-to just lotions for my face is the Cetaphil Moisturizing Lotion. This is a small container. I think I had this as a backup underneath my sink for a while and I finally brought it out and used it. I put a different cap on it because I actually use those, um, it's like the flip cap thing where you can, you, you add the attachment on and it has the bottle sit like this so you can get everything out. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a good lotion. I think I like the CeraVe a little bit better, but Cetaphil is still pretty good. Next, I believe this is the one I was sent in PR. This is the Thayer's uh, Facial Toner in Rose Petal. It's a, it's an oldie but a goodie, a good classic. It's super, super gentle. So if you're looking for like a harsh, not harsh, but if you're looking for like a, um, a toner that's really going to like 
resurface this isn't going to be it this is a good gentle toner you can use twice a day and really it just helps even out my skin before i put on the rest of my skincare routine for the night or for the morning and i can use it twice a day and it doesn't dry me out completely so that's what this is for and it's fantastic and i've gone through so many of these and then i got these in pr and then i bought more it's just they're really good next i have an empty that i picked up i believe it was at yeah tj maxx i see the sticker here um, I used to love, like, in the pre-COVID times, going through all the little bottles of skincare at, like, Marshalls and TJ Maxx. I think since COVID restrictions have lifted, I've gone to, like, one TJ Maxx. Anyway, I used to find, like, really interesting skincare products there, but the downside was, since it's kind of a mishmash, you couldn't get something you could keep in your routine long term, because by the time you liked it, used up the whole thing, and then went back to get more, they wouldn't be there anymore. So this is a product that I picked up there a long time ago, and I never got around to using until now, and it's a just one 100% natural rose hip oil face serum with vitamins A, C, and omega-6. This is just not as good as the one from The Ordinary, and I have an, an empty from The Ordinary as well. Um, the Ordinary is more accessible, it works better, it's, yeah, I think it's priced around the same too. Yeah, this is $6.99, The Ordinary one is around $8 or $9, so yeah, this, this one was kind of a dud, but I did use up the whole thing. Speaking of The Ordinary, I think this is, we could probably just copy and paste from my last empties video, I've got 100% organic cold press rosehip seed oil, the caffeine solution, and the retinol 6%, no, not 6%, Jesus, my face would be gone, retinol 0.5% in squalene. Squalene? squalene um these are pretty much in almost every single one of my empties they're really good i love the ordinary's products if you look i'll take a, i'll show a picture of my skincare shelf here it's 90 percent the ordinary <laughs> i am starting to try out a couple of different products i actually just got a product from good molecules in the mail so i am testing out some different stuff just to like shake things up a little bit but really they're, they're here in every empties video for a reason they're affordable they work really well my skin likes them and i like the price so they, they will continue to be in my videos <laughs> and my skincare routine. Last but not least for skincare, I have a little sample I was sent in PR through Influencer, and this is the Belief Aqua Balm Brightening Vitamin C Cream. It was, it was an okay cream, but honestly for the price point of the full size, not worth it. I, I just I go to a nice drugstore moisturizer from Cetaphil or from CeraVe. Now the eye cream, I was also sent the eye cream sample as a PR and I have to say I kind of hate how much I like that eye cream. So hold on, maybe next empties video I'll talk about the eye cream, but this one not worth the price. Let's move on to hair care. I actually have a lot of products here and I gotta keep them all together for my review roundup later on. But let's start with some shampoos. <laughs> Uh, first, I have a dry shampoo foam that I used up. I, I can't remember. I think this is from Target. Um, Alvin and I used to travel a lot uh, before COVID, um, and we would go and stay. And whenever we did, we had like a bag of like travel necessities. We had like a dry shampoo, a dry conditioner, a couple of different... Um, toiletries and so we're going through and we're using those because now that we live together we're not traveling as often <laughs> together especially with covid um so i used up this dry shampoo it wasn't the best i do like dry shampoo foams in general i think my favorite is just the batiste one um but this one it just i mean it worked okay but uh, it was just all right next we have my favorite co-wash of all time i actually need to pick up another one of these this is the head and shoulders royal oils moisturizing co-wash i've gone through several of these they're really affordable you can get them on amazon it's just i love the shampoos from this line they have a this is the co-wash so it doesn't have parabens or sulfates the other shampoo does have sulfates i'm not 100 percent anti-sulfate because sulfate is what really gets your scalp clean and gets that buildup off so I alternate, I use this most of the time, and then every like once a month, I go in with the sulfate shampoo and give it a really, really good scrub and a cleanse. Uh, but I love this, I will continue to buy it, and it's been instrumental in my curly routine. Next, we have a couple of conditioners. First, I was sent this conditioner in PR through Madison Reed, and this is their color protecting conditioner. I have to say, I went through this pretty fast just because I have thick curly hair, and if a product is also not thick, I can go through it pretty quickly on my hair. It smelled okay, and it just, it, was, it wasn't conditioning enough. Like, I think it was made more for, like, medium to thin hair. But for, like, thick hair, I went through this really fast and it wasn't as, condi like, conditioning and moisturizing as I needed it to be. So, yeah, I like the shampoo better. I'm still using the shampoo, so I'm waiting for that to be finished before I do my uh, curly roundup video. But this one, uh, unfortunately, wasn't a fan. 
Uh, this is another Madison Reed product that I was sent in PR. I believe I reviewed it in my last review roundup video. I'll find that and I'll throw it up in the cards. But this is their Curl Defining Cream. I love this curl cream. It was amazing. They sent this to me in PR and like I need to go out and buy it because I've tried a couple of other curl creams and so far none of them that I've used recently have been as good as this one. So I need to add this to my shopping list actually. I skipped over another conditioner. This is a uh, Shea Moisture conditioner. This is the Manuka Honey and Mafura, Mafura, Mafura Oil. Sure, let's go with that. Intensive Hydration Conditioner. It was okay. I picked this up because I ran out of conditioner and we were at like a CVS and I'm, I'm not a fan. I wouldn't pick this up again. Now a conditioner, a deep conditioner that I love is this one from Cantu. I actually already have one open in my shower that I'm using right now and I just bought another backup. This is the Cantu Shea Butter Leave-In Conditioning Repair Cream. This is what I use to deep condition. I've been deep conditioning like 9 out of 10 wash days. I'm trying to get it so that every time I wash my hair I deep condition and this just works so well and it's so affordable and it smells amazing. Yes. Oh my god. I love this. I love this so much. If you have curly hair and you're looking for a good, affordable, like, bulk option for deep conditioner, please check this out. I see this most often at Target. They have a good selection there. And then my local CVS. Uh, another product from Shea Moisture that I wasn't a huge fan of. This actually took me a while to get through. This is the Shea Moisture Jamaican Black Castor Oil Strengthen and Restore Styling Lotion. I just don't think this is the best type of product for my hair. It was kind of a, a thin, runny lotion for i've noticed that for my hair it really reacts well to like thick leave-in like creams i'm actually using one right now i think it's from cantu and that one just works so much better for my hair than this one it was just a little too thin and i think it's it's better suited for a different texture so i wasn't a huge fan of this i wouldn't buy it again for my hair type i like that there's just like hair hanging off from like every single one of these products Next, this is a product that I also, I was just like okay with. I wasn't a huge fan. It didn't really wow me and I think it's a little overpriced. This is the Not Your Mother's Kinky Moves Curl Defining Hair Cream. I think this is, again, a little too thin for what I need out of like a leave-in cream, a styling cream. Uh, so I wouldn't pick this up again. Uh, points for packaging, it's cute, but just the product itself. I also really, I didn't like the scent. It was just like uh, a, little, a little overpowering in the scent department. Speaking of overpowering in the scent department, I got this as a sample from a Sephora order a long time ago. This is from Fable and Maine, and this is a hair oil. This is the strongest scented hair product I think I've ever used. Oh, yep, I'm about to give myself a migraine. But it smells like a men's cologne, and it's so strong, which is awesome. Like, I used this on days to refresh when I just didn't have time to wash my hair, and I just threw it up in a bun. Putting this in my hair, like with a little bit of dry shampoo, I smelled amazing, just like a little bit. And honestly, a little bit does go a long way, but I looked up the full price, or the full size bottle of this, way too expensive. Especially when I don't use it like all too often. I really only used it because I got the sample and for a sample, this was a good size sample, so meh. Next, I got this in PR from Zotos and Influencer. This is the All About Curls Boosting Foam. This is lightweight hold, so to be honest, it wasn't great. I need strong hold uh, because my hair is thick and it gets really really frizzy especially now that we're in the summer and it's disgusting outside so this was more of kind of a like refresher day kind of hair thing but even then it didn't work that great um it just it's not for me because i need i need strong hold i need a strong gel which is actually the next gel that i have to talk about right now so this just it worked okay it wasn't for my hair type if you have thinner hair or you're you have more wavy hair i think this probably would work better for you last hair care product we have is my recent favorite gel and i actually just bought a gigantic like bulk version of this gel because i love this and i went through it kind of quickly this is the eco styling gel i love using this along with my new wash day routine and when i do come out with that review roundup i think i might do a separate video for my current wash day routine but this gel works so well so well it's it's definitely a tight crunchy kind of hold but in the dead of summer and the humidity that's exactly what i need right now and you can scrunch the crunch out it just ah uh, this works so well and it's really affordable compared to other gels that i've tried i found the big like bulk version at target it was amazing i still have that and i'm going through it but next time i see it i'll probably pick up like two just to have it in like for backup and i won't need it for a few months but this has been my new favorite gel. I love it. I recommend it if you have thicker hair or if you're struggling with frizz, especially in the summer. We're in the home stretch. We have makeup. And I really only have a handful of makeup products here. So let's jump in first with a setting spray. 
This is the Milani Make It Last Sunscreen Setting Spray. I love the original Milani Make It Last. I think it's a really good dupe for the MAC Fix Plus. I wasn't a fan of this one. It was heavily scented, and to be honest, I'm already wearing an SPF. I don't need my setting spray to have an SPF. And it made me feel a little bit drier. Like, um, I like to wear kind of a lot of powders, and then I use my setting sprays to melt my powders down, and then I feel refreshed after using my setting sprays and having it dry down. After I used this, I felt drier. And it, it wasn't comfortable. It really wasn't. I did not try using this on days where I had to take like pictures of myself, but I'm assuming this would give you a lot of flashback as well. So honestly, this is probably something I would really only use if I was going to the beach and like not wearing any sunscreen and I would just spray this on my face all day. Yeah. So as far as use in makeup, not a fan, but if in general, if you're going to be outside a lot, this is probably a decent option. It's SPF 30. So it's probably a good option to keep like in your purse or if you just want to spray your face down and your arms and stuff like that. Uh, next, I have a loose powder from Laura Mercier. Honestly, I mean, it's a really good powder. It's, it's pricey, so I don't buy it like all the time, but every now and then I like to treat myself and get my, I get a nice little Laura Mercier. I almost cut my finger off trying to get the uh, filter, the sifter out. I remember doing it a couple years ago and I got the sifter out pretty easily. So I went in with a knife and I was like, oh, I can get this open. And the knife went right into my finger. It's healed over now, but like I messed up my finger a while ago. So I learned my lesson and now Alvin opens up all my makeup. He did it <laughs> without hurting himself. So anyway, um, I used up the whole thing. I do like it. It's not, like I said, in every time repurchase immediately, but every few months, once a year, twice a year, I like to treat myself to a higher end powder. At the very opposite end of super affordable, awesome powders that I buy all the time, this is the Shop Masse AOA Studio Perfect Finishing Pressed Powder in the shade 152 Porcelain. I can't count how many times or how many ones of these I've gone through because they're just really good. It's affordable, it's bulletproof, it's comfortable, it works well on top of a bunch of different foundations. It just, it's, it's my go-to affordable powder. I feel like this product is also in a bunch of empties videos that I have. This is the NYX Control Freak Brow Gel. This is my current favorite brow gel. I'm currently testing out a couple of other brow gels actually from Shop Miss A, and so far I'm not liking them as much. This one is the closest dupe for the ABH clear brow gel that I found. I like the tight crunchy hold that that brow gel gives you, and this gives me everything that I need for a really affordable price. The only thing I don't like about this is the spoolie. I feel like it's a little too big to be a brow spoolie. This almost was like a mascara wand. I feel like it needs to be a little bit smaller, and then this would be perfect, and that's literally it. But I, I can deal with the spoolie, so I've gone through more of these than I can count. And I do still have two backups, but I'm waiting to pull those out until I test out some other products. But if you're looking for a good, affordable, bulletproof brow gel, NYX. I just realized I got loose powder all over me. I don't know how I did that because I was empty. Next, we have two mascaras. This is my favorite. I go through this all the time. I love this. Only keeping mascaras for three months, by the way. This is the Essence Lash Princess False Lash Effect Mascara. I buy these practically in bulk at Ulta because they're really affordable. They're between $3.99 and $4.99 depending on where you get them and when you get them. They're, bad. they're the best. I love this so much. I've gone through more than I can count. If you're looking for a good affordable mascara, like literally this is the only one you'll ever need. As for the other mascara, this is from AOA Studio. This is the Wisp Mascara. I really didn't like this. All it did was make my lashes black. And that was it. Like I didn't get any curling. I got no volume. I got nothing from this. Last and sadly, I think the saddest one, I finally had one of my Chromium Liquid Shadows from Natasha Denona dry out on me. This is the liquid shadow in Infranude, which is such a good everyday color. Honestly, honestly, I'm probably going to buy this again. I liked this so much. It was such an amazing, quick, like everyday look that I could do. And it looked amazing and I could wear it without eye primer like this. Oh my God, I love this so much. I'm probably, I'm probably going to go buy it like right now. So those are all my empties. I've been talking for way too long. I can't wait to go ahead and make dinner and get to bed. <laughs> Let me know down below what's the last product you finished up. And I can't wait to see you in my next video. Bye.